If Diantha traveled to the Galar region, could she defeat Leon and become champion in Pokemon Shield? This idea was requested by Magalar the Great, so first of thank you for the idea. If you have any other challenge ideas, make sure you comment down below. With that said, let's quickly go over the rules of this challenge. I can only use the Diantha's team from the champion battle in Pokemon X and Y, and only her ace Pokemon may Dynamax. In this case, it will be Gardevoir. No held items or heals in battle whatsoever, and no overleveling parts to gym leaders ace Pokemon. I will need to use other mons to either just get us started, or to go for a trade. As always, I'm writing the script as I go along with the video, and at this point, I haven't even started yet. So let me know down below if you think I will beat it or not. This is a team that I haven't used before, so this will be pretty interesting. If you guys do enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ding dong that notification bell. And with that said, let's get game. To start the run, I go for Scorbunny. However, this doesn't really mean anything as Diantha's team is actually pretty well balanced against all three starters with similar weaknesses. With our buddy being female, I call it Lola. Scored a penalty against Wooloo and burnt Grookey to a crisp before going onwards and upwards to save Sean the Sheep in the slumbering world. Along the way, we encounter a disobedient doggy. Sweeties! Okay, that was one very, very rude doggy. Wait, wait, Sean, he's here, don't worry, you did good. Yay, GG's all around. Our journey begins, avoiding every single bird and squirrel about, and we eventually arrive at the professor's house for the Pokédex. Not like I will use it, but I think maybe once I become champion in this region, I'll give that one a go too. We prove to the current champ our worthy by once again kicking Wooloo around the moon, cremating Grookey to Ash, and ruining the Rookie D population. I mean, you shouldn't expect less, I'm already a champion. We receive the Wishing Stars and make hustle towards the wild area. Here we can catch our first Pokemon with a little trick. First, I get 3000 watts for a Wishing Piece and then head over to one of the dens next to Roselia. I don't know the number. Do a hard save and keep soft resetting until I get a purple beam. Once I do, I advance the time until my first team member shows up, Gumi. I call her Squashy. And I also encounter a wild Rots as well. All my earned Dynamax candy from farming will go into him. And I call him Sir Knight simply because it will become a male Gardevoir. Now I have two members, it's time to check in at the Budu Inn. Oi lads, I can smell victory here! I am champion and grand duchess of the Kalos region. You really had your hopes up there, mate. After defeating the boys, Marnie apologizes and more Peko chases them back into hiding. We sleep well and check in at the Motorstoke Stadium, our uniform number being 119. 11 and 9 are the lucky numbers in the France Mega Ball draw. And seeing as she is the champion of Kalos, this number should bring us luck. But before we move on, there is one last thing we should do. Go to Primark. We first show Avery who is boss at the Isle of Armor in order to receive the style card. From there we are able to get a new haircut, new eyelashes, and a cheap dress. It's a work in progress, but I think we could rock with it for now. We head our way to Route 3, where Hop gets another beating once again and gets Sir Knight higher level to catch up. Squashy is already at level 19, so I had to be careful. In the caves, we take on bees, resist the psychic typing against the Losus, but Hatterini chips away and takes Sir Knight down. Squashy finishes Hatterini off with Dragon Breath and also Goth Eater, giving us the win. He lets us pass onto Route 4, and I catch the last possible Pokemon to catch at this point, Pumpkaboo. It's average size, just like Diamphans in X and Y, and I call her. <laughs> What else do you want me calling her? We compete in our first gym battle, and let's say I'm no farmer. So while I team up with Yampa to get them back to the pens, you should join the Discord server in the description where you can trade and battle Pokemon. And it's a fun place to hang out with other bright-minded trainers and all. With the shameless plug out the way, let's get to our first badge. I send out Sir Knight first and go for the early Dynamax to set the terrain. As a baby Pokemon, I need every assist possible. We outspeed, and only a third of Gossifleur's health was taken out. I took all three turns to take it down. Honestly, a two-hit KO and a Max Garb was what I was wanting. It's Elder Gloss turn to Dynamax, and one Max Overgrowth finishes Sir Knight off. 
Squashy is out next and we secure a paralysis on the plant. Its last turn was immobilized, so we're back to the old strategy. Squashy has Zap Sivir as well, so we had an extra piece of immunity there. All we can do is chip away, but it wasn't enough and Squashy does go down. Boo has her fun and one Shadow Sneak later gets our first badge. Ugh, I get enough mobs as it is back in Kalos. We set forth onto the bridge where Team Yell was intimidating the poor scientist. So Sir Knight and Draining Kiss to the rescue. It takes Zigzagoon down with a scratch, but Fever was too much. Squashy hangs on with no trouble as the fox falls after two dragon breaths, and Sableye was all booing chipping away. The chaps scamper, and we get free bike. On our way to... Oh, I forgot to heal. Yeah, I think I need to grind a little more. After battling trainers I haven't fought yet and Ralts evolving to Curlia, giving us much needed stat boosts all around, we try again. This time, hop, hop to the moon, clearing the path to hold break. The previous runs as Getsis and Giovanni, I was worried about. But now, with a grass type on my team, this was actually quite easy. After more EXP farming and Dynamax levels, of course. I start with Boo and a Water Pulse barely bruises. However, a sea bomb puts Nessa's Goldeen under the sea. Aracuda has some bite, but goes down to another bomb, leaving her Dynamax Dreadnought. It finishes off our boo with a max darkness and takes two turns to finish Squashy. But Sir Knight's time has come, traces the hidden ability Swift Swim, and we luckily scrape a win with two max overgrowths, which Dreadnought is four times weak to. Once everyone is fully evolved, it should be easier in the Champions League. The chairman invited us to eat at the seafood place in town, and whilst he was on the Dreadmoor I'd just defeated, I went for the frog's legs. It's a little French tradition. All before pushing on to help Kabu and a Akarkol in the East Galar mines against Team Yell. Along the way, Bede wanted a rematch, which was nice and easy, with Boo's Shadow Sneak on Solosis and Gothita, and Squashy's Dragon Breath on Hatini and Ponyta, and we team up with Harp against a couple more grunts. The result? Yippee, we saved the day. <sighs> Back for some sleep in the buddy drop him. Well, for some. Meanwhile, I head south to the Crown Tundra to grab two more team members in my party, but more specifically, Tyrant. It's a rock dragon type which double resists against fire. I name him Terry and my Amora Elsa. No! I make haste towards the gym challenge Kabu's Nine Tails is up first, and I go for Ancient Power, praying for the stat boost. While it did damage, no boost, so Dragon Claw it was, and two was enough to take it down. We did get burnt in the process, however. Arcanine hits with Intimidate and Bite, but Ancient Power defeats that purpose. It's not enough, however, and I swap to Squashy, finishing Arcanine with a Water Pulse. Said to Scorch his last, Gigantamaxes and finishes off Squashy, and sweeps Elsa. Tyrone also gets put to rest, but all the turns are over, meaning Sir Knight is safe to Dynamax, and two Max Mindstorms are able to win the Fire Badge. Kabu gives us a smile and send off as we go back to the wild area. Hop has a fight with Mr. Pinky, whereas I trade with my brother Boo to evolve to Gore Guys. I'm not keeping the egg, don't worry. He doesn't even know what it is anyway. Speaking of my brother, you should probably give him a cheeky follow on Twitch. With that said, let's continue to Hammerlock. We arrive, but not without bees behind our trail, intimidating our beloved friend into the dust. Oh, just you wait until I get to beat you with my champion team. Nevertheless, we go on a hunt for my last Pokemon, Harleacher. It has a 2% encounter rate on Route 6, and without the right conditions, this is the only place we can hunt right now. Oh, that's nice how some fat chaps won't let us pass. Now that I think about it, do you not have better things to do than to keep the snake asleep? Go drink at a club. Watch a band. Go on a hike! And that's all she wrote. Ew, creepy. Much, much later. I give up. Yeah, I gave up with this one, just with the ghost gym around the corner. But first, it's time to give a lesson to Hop about champion training. Cramorant is up first and deals decent damage, including yeeting a Pikachu into my ghost pumpkin. We were barely holding on until the monkey tucks into the vegetable. Elsa is up hoping I can use Aurora Beam, 
Frockley holds on, finishing Elsa with two razor leaps. Squashy is up to finish the monkey with Dragon Breath, and it eventually goes down. He sends out a silly cobra, and a single dig finishes us off, forcing me into Terry and Dragon Claw. Again, we do decent damage, but it stays up, which a bite takes it out. His final Pokemon, Toxel, didn't stand a chance against the what? Okay, two Dragon Claws shut the baby up. Before entering the Ghost Gym, Sir Knight evolved into Gardevoir. Our team was slowly but surely starting to take their place, with a fully grown pumpkin and a magic fairy. Oh yay, my favorite mini game. Anyone else get pinball slash Tetris vibes? We beat all the trainers and the mission without even breaking a sweat before taking on Alistair, the spirit whisperer. I start with Terry not only being a great physical attacker, but also God of War is weak to ghost types, so I do have to be careful. Plus, my whole team are underleveled. One strong crunch takes the mask down and breaks Kersler's armor, but that wasn't enough and my T-Rex falls. Boo is up to finish with Shadow Sneak, and a critical hit secures the round. Mimikyu is up and Shadow Sneak drops the disguise. However, he also uses Shadow Sneak and outspeeds, meaning Boo eventually goes down. Squashy could only use Water Pulse, which really does not dent. And guess where that ends up? Yep, six feet under. Sir Knight comes out, and I go for the Dynamax, not only to outspeed in the HP buff, but to set up a Max Mindstorm Psychic Terrain, which should sweep the rest of the match. It takes down Mimikyu, traces Gengar's Cursed Body, and another Max Mindstorm secures our fourth badge. Right, on our way to... What the heck was that? Can I also quickly mention I said no held items? Gore guys has pick up and will pick up literally anything. So I gave it a bomb mushroom. I was getting a little sick of it, picking up held battle items. Bede was on the hunt for wishing stars in assistance of the chairman, but only ruins the ruins and gets wrecked by Sir Knight. Stupid easy sweep. After security take out the trash, we head into the forest for a couple more level ups before taking on the strange wizard at Balon Lee. As always, the audition stage was super easy despite still being on the levels, taking out Annette, Teresa and Theodora. It's amazing what the quiz can do to turn the tides. Maybe the next challenge I should make it harder for me. It's time to finally take on Opal and the wizard sends out Galarian Weezing. With the team I've got, fairies were going to hit hard. Squashy went down to a fairy wind. And it's safe to say I really don't know fairy types well, but a side beam from Sir Knight takes it out. Marwal intimidates, but we switch into Boo. Seed it to sap more HP and Shadow Sneak. We barely hold on, but thankfully one more Shadow Sneak takes it down. Toja Kiss is up now, and it gave me huge problems in the Getsis run. A lot of people say it has Serene Grace, but it actually has Hustle. So I'm just unlucky. It doesn't put Elsa to misery this time, and takes the fairy down with just 2 HP. Opal Gigantamaxes her Alcremi and does finish with G-Max Finale, however. At this point, I wanted to store more, so I sacrificed Terry and Max Guard with Sir Knight. With the opposing Dynamax turns out the way, it's my turn. 2 Max Star Falls hits hard and final Dazzling Gleam secures the win. Honestly, so far, we haven't really had much trouble. Oh wow, come on! So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. I was searching for about three hours total until at long last. Hello, Hallelujah! It's about their time! We now have the firepower we need to take on Hop. This is only difficult due to half of the team have tight disadvantages, but also a baby Pokemon, which doesn't make things better. Sir Knight takes a beating with Trevenant's Shadow Claw, but two Dazzling Gleams sort that problem out. Snorlax is next, and I grass not denting, but it's not enough, and we faint to a heavy slam. I send out Boo for the very high physical attack and bulk, and two C bombs take the big bear out. Hop sends out Heat More and finishes off our vegetable, but I bring my T-Rex out to show what it means to be the king of Pokemon once upon a time. Bolting is up and roars our Terry out of the field, sending out Harlucha. I switch back, but it roars again, forcing our Squishy Dragon out, killing it with a crunch. Terry finally has its moment and takes it down with a crunch. 
but his last Pokemon is now grown up Gorilla Collins and gave a lot of my team a drum beat him. <laughs> Hallelujah was the only one to stand against the Gorilla, and two bounces thankfully finished the match. Afterwards, Terry evolved into Tyrantrum, and we make haste towards Sir Chester when we finally have a new look. Yeah, yeah! Again, we were so on the level for the gym, so for once, I call upon taking on the gym trainers before taking on the fearsome Melanie. I was in no state ready for the battle whatsoever, but we press on. I call out Hallelujah and start with Fly. Oh my god, that looks ace and a one shot! Big Threat Darmanitan is out now. I attempt a submission, but we miss, and a nice little cool crash finishes our Karate Parrot. I go for Terry, who has a stronger physical bunk. She uses Taunt, which I don't know why, and a Rock Slide takes it out. The Ice Cube Penguin is up next, and I go for Crunch just to activate Ice Face. It hits us with Icy Wind, which does scratch us up, but a Freeze Dry finishes us off. There was no way I was outspeeding, so I send out Alsa for the special chip damage instead. Three Adrian powers later and stat boosts and we're onto our Lapras. Being a water ice type, I wasn't sure if freeze dry would be super effective or not, but sadly not. And the Max Geyser destroys Elsa and basically the rest of my team. But not without chip damage. Sir Knight was up and at long last we could do damage with Max Overgrowth. Sing! Why? Why are you torture me like this? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, please. Yes! Rust up! And it's over! One move away from losing. It was a tough battle, but with two badges to go, we swiftly move on for Curry at Bob's Your Uncle. Oh my god, this is actually brilliant. <laughs> Why didn't I do this the first time I played the game? <laughs> We head down to Spike Murph, only to find out it's shut. Luckily, my girly bestie gets us in, but not without a battle herself. She starts with Lipard, and I send out Hallelujah to set up a sword start and hopefully sweep the rest of the way. A torment changes those plans, however, but a submission takes the big cat out. Her more Peko outspeeds and finishes off our bird. I send out Sir Knight and a one-hit KO with Moonblast. Her Toxic Croak is up and our fairy didn't stand a chance, but Elsa retaliates with an Earth Power. We barely hold on with a second Sucker Punch, but another Earth Power finishes off Jujitsu Frog. It's Elsa's time to go down as Scrafty uses Brick Break, a Dragon Claw secures the win, and with that, we're on our way to our brother. Oh, and Squashy evolved to Sligu. It's about damn time. We bumped into some chavs along the way, but it wasn't much of a problem for my Karate Parrot. He is intimidates Gravity is out to play, so I set up a double sword stance and a roost after the brick breaks. But given how I lost all that gained health, I decided to sweep instead, taking it out. A fly on Malamar was almost enough, but it wasn't enough, and it knocks us out. Sir Knight is next and finishes off with Moonblast. Another Moonblast later and it dents Obstagoon, but Throat Chop and Shadow Claw later and takes us down. Squashy is out and finishes with Dragon Pulse. We needed the evolution buff before. We do decent damage on Skun Tank, but his Sucker Punch was just too powerful and knocks us out. I finish with Terry and Dragon Claw claims our Dark Badge. Now, while Marnie battles, I've got a fake Dragon Tamer defeat. About an hour later, Elsa evolves into Amorous, and with the cast of Harry Potter failing their exams, it's time to go against Raihan in doubles. He sends Flygon and Gigalith whereas I send Boo and Terry. The duo defeat Flygon quickly as the Gigalift sets up, and with both supports out, it's an easy move to take out Gigalift and dent Anaconda's defences. Eventually, his house comes out with a G-Max depletion and takes out Terry, but a second seed bomb finishes Sandaconda. I take the opportunity to stall with a Leech Seed and sacrifice Elsa. It's just too slow to grab a hit. We waste his G-Max turn sacrificing Sligu, and boo. All that remains are my bird and my fairy. I can safely Dynamax with support from Hallelujah, and a max Starfall finishes the match. With that said, we have completed the gym challenge with some close calls, but no problems nevertheless. But can we defeat the League Cup? Well, to answer your question, 
not at the state we're currently in. So more level grinding and move cheater in later and we're on course. Some of the really good moves are still over the level cap, so maybe closer to the very end. Let me know down below in the comments on what you're all thinking. We put Squashy away as this is the only opportunity to evolve to Gudra. So I go above the level cap and put him in the box for the semi-finals. After completing the movesets, we're good to go against Marnie. Her team is very similar, but my move strategy has changed. Oh, nearly a full one hit sweep. I really don't know what to say. Other than, wow, I love this Gardevoir. Our battle with Hop went slightly different, mainly with a mixture of different Pokemon. I set Sword Stance on Hallelujah as double goes for Cotton Guard. So another Sword Stance and we're ready. He hits a Send Headbutt, but we stay up and a high jump kick knocks it out. Pinchurch in is next and I go for Fire Punch and pray I take it in one, but sadly don't and then Thunderbolt finishes us off. I send out Terry being a great physical attacker and an Earthquake finishes the Sea Urchin off. His cuddly teddy bear is up next and the Dragon Claw does hit but so did his hammer arm. A critical hit Dragon Claw takes it down thankfully. With Crunch being my best move for Corviknight with 100% accuracy, I go for two which barely holds on. Going for the full restore, I take advantage. It does outspeed though and a Steel Wing does finish the T-Rex off. Sir Knight is up, outspeeding and hitting hard with Thunderbolt, bringing it down from flight. Our aces are out now and I go for the Dynamax Max Starfall, set in the mist. Two more after that and we are victorious in the semi-finals. Oh, it's nice dinners on Leon tonight. More frog legs. Well, actually no, because he is held hostage with the chairman. So with the help of Team Yell, we locate the imposter among us and we break into Rose's tower. Hallelujah and the rest of Hop's team getting us closer and closer to the top of Rose, Leon, and ugh. This b I send out Sir Knight first, and I think that was a bad idea, being wigged to Ghost, obviously. We do take Frostlass out with two Shadow Balls, but big damage of Hex and a burn, and it's over for Sir Knight. Here I was expecting Malotic, but Serena is next. I go for Trick or Treat, followed by Phantom Force. We were just shy of knocking it out and two acrobats finish us off. Next was Squashy and Sludge Wave and that finishes her off. Her Salasal is next and I miss the first Muddy Water. After the toxic and critical hit of Venoshock, Squashy was out. I sent Hallelujah to finish with Fly but not without the Poison Stat. My Lolic is up now and I go for the Sword Stars while she sets up an Apple Wing. It's all or nothing with this one and a high jump kick Oko's the fish. She Gigantamax is her Garbodor, so to waste two turns, a fly does a lot of damage, but Gmax Malador was just too much for our parrot. I send out Terry to finish with her. Oh my god, really? It's all over. Elsa will not tank this. He tanks! And down it goes! Just scraping a win, and the plan is coming together for Rose. Oh, it's fight night and we're ready for the finals. I'm ready to become champion to get... Ugh, not you. Bead is now the gym leader of Fairies. I send out Squashy and Fire Blast is an Oko on his mobile. Sir Knight, I thought you were on my team. Oh, wait, it's female. Whew. Okay, we're fine. Sludge Wave you. Rabidash gains the same treatment as Gardevoir with two Sludge Waves taking out the Unicorn. But unfortunately, finally goes down to Hatterini's G-Max Smite. I send out my loyal Sir Knight who would never abandon me in my time of need and a Max Phantasm takes it out. With the intrusion out of the way, we can finally compete in the League Cup. Nessa with Galassapod is up first and I send out Sir Knight for two reasons. One, Tracy Emergency Exit. Two, Dynamax, set the terrain up and sweep. We outspeed but the Galassapod barely holds on from Max Lightning and Sea King comes out. It doesn't survive a critical hit Max Lightning and Galisopod heals, only to be taken out by another Max Lightning. Barrascuda does dent with Throat Chop, but it's the same Thunderbolt treatment for her. And for you, we're already at her Gigantamax Dreadnought, and a Thunderbolt does hit, 
but it's not enough, and the critical attack darkness finally puts our fairy to rest. However, one seed bomb from Boo, and we're on to the next round. Alistair is up with Dust Noir, so I lead with Terry, and a critical hit crunch is a one shot. His Chandelier does spoil my attack stack with a Willow Whisper, but a second crunch extinguishes the flames. Poltegeist is up, and we do damage with another crunch, but it wasn't enough, and we fall to a Shadow Ball. I send Boo out, but it outspeeds and sweeps our pumpkin. I go for Squashy with a Dragon Pulse, tanking another Shadow Ball, and we finally took it out. Cursler is up, and we do heavy damage, but it's not enough, and we go down. Knowing it would use a full restore, I take advantage to send out Cernite, and a Max Fantasy finishes it off. His final Pokemon, Gengar, comes out, and a Stab Max Mindstorm was enough to finish this round of the League Cup. The final round is, of course, Raihin. He sends out his Torkoal, making Muddy Water not as effective. He does hit the Yawn, however, and we fall asleep. He uses that time for a full restore, which is actually pretty smart. We wake up on the next turn and chip away until our Squashy cannot take any more. I send out Terry and hit hard with Earthquake, finishing the Tortoise off. Next up was Flygob, and we survive a super effective Earthquake and take it down with Shadow Claw. We dent the Turtonator with Dragon Claw, but one Dragon Pulse does finish us off, however. I turn to Hallelujah to finish it off with Fly. His Kuja is up next, and I go for High Jump Kick, but it wasn't enough, and a Thunder takes his town. Boo comes out and vanishes instantly to put to rest with Phantom Force. His house is out, and I keep going with Phantom Force just to waste the turns. We were barely holding on, but the Sandstorm is too strong to withstand, and takes our Ghost Pumpkin out. By the time we go down, Duraludon's Dynamax ended, so now it's our turn to take advantage, and a Max Starfall was enough to win the finals in the league. One step closer to becoming champion of Galar. Leon, I am ready. Wait, 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 hold up, what's going on? I knew that man was too fishy back in the restaurant. Walking out before even competing, we find a way to stop the darkest day. We rush to the slumbering world to pick up the rusted sword and shield. Then it's one flying taxi back to the Hammerlock power plant to stop Rose once and for all. I send out Hallelujah against his Escavalia. I was worried the first one wasn't going to be enough, but as he sets up, our second fire punch finished it off. He sends out Clink Clang, and I really needed my stab for a high damage, so a high jump kick takes it out. Berserker is up next, and I set up a sword stance to be able to sweep. However, this wasn't enough, and we go down to a Shadow Claw. To retaliate, a Fire Blast from Squashy takes the Viking out. Another Fire Blast on Ferrothorn, who is four times weak, and make a big dent out of Copperager, but it wasn't enough, and Squashy goes down to G-Max Steel Surge. Terry's Earthquake does huge damage, but Steel Surge still is too much, and we lose Terry. Well then, Sir Knight's time to shine and Max Phantasm was enough to finally take the Copperager down. The Chairman was done, but the disaster was just beginning. Eternatus took aim at us and two sidekicks was all to take it down. Or maybe make things ten times worse! With that said, the Sword and Shield summoned the two puppies and with the help of Behemoth Bash and Behemoth Blade, we finally caught the monstrosity. And I didn't even do anything, it just swept me. A few days pass and with Rose now in Drail and us level grinding, I think it's time I get my championship title in the Galar region. It's sad no one recognises me as champion of Kalos, but they'll see why. First moves Aegislash and Terry comes out. King Shield is in place, but an earthquake wasn't enough and gets it down to a third before taking my T-Rex out with Flash Cannon. I send out Squashy to finish off with Fire Blast, but Leon retaliates with an outrage from Haxorus. But this is what I wanted. I can safely send out Sir Knight without taking any damage with Dragon Immunity. And from here, I go straight for the Dynamax. A Max Starfall takes it out and sates the Mist Terrain. Dragapult does some damage to us, but we hit hard with Max Starfall, taking the Darted Ghost Dragon out too and a Max Phantasm on Mr. Rhyme finishes that one off too. Our Dynamax ends and Inteleon comes out. We hit a Thunderbolt, but it wasn't enough, and Sir Knight falls. At this point, it's done its job, and Boo with Seed Bomb knocks out the Agent Listen. 
His Gigantamax Charizard is last, and I go for Phantom Force to hopefully waste a Dynamax turn. But it outspeeds and Wildfire one-shots our boom. Hallelujah couldn't even outspeed, and she too falls. It's a simple 1v1. And we tank a Max Rockfall before hitting an Agent Power, but we're out of the stat box. Please tank, please tank, please. Oh, I missed! It's over! Wow! One more turn away from losing it all, but we managed to tank through and win the championship. And Diantha can become champion of Galar in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was really fun to play as the Kalos champion. If you did, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.